neighbors that got injured and the ones that lost homes. I heard you mention a little bit about that. Yes, of course. So the, the firefighters, as I said, um, very heroic efforts uh, in this. Um, the fire outpaced everything that they could do. It outpaced the, the amount of water that they could put on it. So they are certainly to be commended for their efforts. Um, it did, unfortunately, overcome uh, at least one apparatus, as there's a couple of apparatus actually, but one where the firefighters had to evacuate in a different vehicle. So they all got into a vehicle. One of them, uh, they couldn't all fit, so one of them, unfortunately, they were held, he was held onto and uh, unfortunately partially drugged. Um, and so he is severely injured, but he's recovering well. Uh, he's in a hospital in, Oha in Oahu, and so he's doing well. Uh, also, 14 firefighters so far uh, have been identified and they've lost everything. They lost their homes. Uh, others have a lot of devastation, and so we're continuing, uh, the fire chief here is continuing to gather that information. And so certainly um, they are part of the community and as they continue to work, uh, we just ask that everybody keep them front of mind because they continue to work and help with uh, recovery and, and um, some of the search and rescue and yet they too are part of your community who have loss. It sounded like there were several factors that kind of led to just a very unique conditions that day. Can you describe that, the low grass bed? I, I picked up on several items that you talked about. Yes, so from what we observed today, and this again, I've only been here a few hours, was not here during the fire, but from what I observed today and in talking with the fire chief, it appears that this may have begun as a grass fire. We do not know source of ignition yet, that's still undetermined, but once the grass began to, um, to burn, Grass is a fine fuel, and when it's dry grass, it becomes very fast burning. Okay, so we call it fine because it does burn so fast. And so as those grasses burn and they've ignited a structure, then that structure itself becomes fuel. Whatever the organic materials that could burn and the products inside the homes that could burn. So plastics, all of these things. That's why you'll hear uh, the mayor and the governor talk about the toxic nature of what's down there. It's because of what has burned, the products of combustion, right? And so we watch that happen um, from structure to structure. I'm sure you saw it on the news, everyone else, as these things burn. We can also tell that it stays horizontal because if you look uh, at some point, you'll see pictures of the trees. You'll see the trees are burned only so far up. The tops of the trees are not burned in all of the trees. And so that means that we had low fuel that was sufficient to continue to cause the fire to burn with those 80 mile an hour winds at Sun Peaks, 60 miles sustained. You had this moving and it moved where it found fuel. Fire needs those elements, it needs fuel, it needs air, and it has an ignition source and you had all three in this. Was there any hope for somebody that was in that condition to get out, like to escape those conditions? Um, the only hope was, uh, in the moment and rapid understanding of what they were facing, rapid recognition, uh, situational awareness, and you saw that in some of the survivors as we listened to those stories, they understood and they moved quickly. Uh, we saw a lot of uh, cars that unfortunately had been overcome down on the, uh, uh, the ocean front um, as we observed this morning. So uh, it's unknown about the, uh, the folks that were in those vehicles, but the cars remained there. And so it would have been in the moment, understanding what they were facing and finding the evacuation route. Uh, when we were down there, uh, there were lots of homes, lots of businesses, lots of cars. Do you know where the victims are primarily being found? I do not. The search is ongoing. And so um, everyone that had been found as of um, yesterday and going um, early yesterday, when the numbers were at 55 or so, were all outside structures outside. But since then, the numbers have risen because our search and rescue teams um, are getting inside the structure. So we have USAR teams that have come from Washington State. So we have Task Force One from Washington State and Nevada. Task Force One, they're here. Um, the uh, Maui County Fire Department has embedded an engine company or a crew with each of those task forces, and they are spread out searching structures now and going back to search each of the vehicles as well. And so everything is being searched, and that's why you're watching now because we We've put additional numbers for search crews, and that's why you're seeing the fatality numbers go up. So when they put the X's on the car, does that mean they'll go back to it and search it again? 
So the X's only mean initial search. That is correct. It's initial search, and you'll see a second marking uh, when it has been searched again. Okay. And the same thing for the buildings? Same thing for the buildings. There's an initial search and then a secondary search, and you'll see the markings change. And 12 cadaver dogs, right? Um, this morning, I'm not sure what the number was. I know we met with five this morning when we were in the area, and we had more dogs on the way, so I'm not sure the total number. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, absolutely.